Hello everyone, I am Sanjay Gupta. I welcome you on Sanjay Gupta Tech School. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how you can set up Visual Studio Code for Lightning Web Component. So in my previous video, I just gave you introduction about LWC. And before implementing Lightning Web Component, we just need to set up Visual Studio Code and other configuration. So in this video, I will be guiding you step by step. So first step will be to download and install Visual Studio Code. So for that purpose, you can use this link, which is a simple code.visualstudio.com slash download. So just click on this link. So you won't be able to click because it is available on my system. So you can just type this URL in your system and uh, you will see these options. Like if you're using Windows, you can click here for Linux. These options are available for Mac. These options are available. So you can just click download and install so that your Visual Studio code will be available in your system, right? And uh, once your Visual Studio code is installed, so you will see an icon on your desktop or uh, if you're using a Mac, so it will be available in the bottom bar. So you will see this kind of icon and you can open that now moving further so after completion of step one like if you have downloaded and installed visual studio code so next we need to focus on the step number two so it is to install salesforce dx cli so to connect the visual studio code with salesforce or we need to install salesforce dx cli how we can do that so here's the url so you can just type developer.salesforce.com slash tools slash sfdxcli. So I'm just clicking here. So this type of UI you will see once you type this URL in your system. And uh, you will see the options like for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So you can just click. So right now, Mac is already selected. So it is showing download for Mac. If you click on Windows, so you will see these options. If you click on Linux, so you will see these options. So as per your system, you can just download it. And uh, after download and install, what you need to do? So once installed, you can just test it by opening the command window and type SFDX. So you will see the version and other details about Salesforce CLI. So in my system, I'm just using Mac. So in my system, it is already installed. So if I open the terminal in the Mac, so I'm just going to show you how it will look like. So I'm on the terminal and I'm just uh, typing SFDX and pressing enter. So here you can see, you will see the version, usage, topics, commands. So if you see these details, it means SFDX SL CLI is installed in your system successfully. So this was the step number two. After completion of this step to like download, install, and verify whether Salesforce CLI is installed or not. So after verifying this, you can jump to step number three. So for step number three, you just need to open your Visual Studio code and you need to install Salesforce extension pack, right? So once you install Salesforce extension pack, so it will be installing Apex, Salesforce CLI integration, Apex Interactive Debugger, Apex Replay Debugger, Visual Force, Aura Components, and Lightning Web Components. So now I'm jumping to Visual Studio Code. So this will be the UI. Like if you open Visual Studio Code, so this kind of UI you will see. And on left-hand side, you will see this extension icon. If you click here, so here you can search for Salesforce Extension Pack. So but at top, you will see it. So you can type complete as well. Otherwise, it will be available on the top as you type Salesforce EXT. So just click on it. So in my system, it is already installed. So this extension pack includes these nine packages. So here you can see I am having this uninstall button. But in your case, if you are doing it for the first time, you will see the install button. So just click on that. And uh, uh, it will take some time and uh, all those nine packages will be uh, installed in your VS Code. So this was a step number three. Now moving to step number four. 
So step number four says like how we can create a project with the help of Visual Studio Code. So to create first project in Visual Studio Code, so you need to open command palette or you can press control or command plus shift plus P. So if you're using Windows, so you need to type, you need to press control plus shift plus P. If you're using Mac, so you, you, you just need to uh, have a combination of command plus shift plus P. Then you need to type SFDX colon create project with manifest. Then you need to type the name of the project and then press enter. Then it will ask you to select the location where you want to save the project and your project will be created. So I'm just going to give you a brief demonstration of this. So just jump to Visual Studio Code, right? So after uh, installing this, so this is one time step. Now uh, you, you just need to press uh, Control Shift P or Command Shift P as per your system. So I'm using Mac, so I'm pressing Command Shift P. So you can see this palette is open. And here in my system, SFDX create project with manifest is highlighted here, like uh, in the second option. But if I type SFDX colon create project with manifest, so this option will be available. So I just need to click on it. So here you can see it is asking for the name. So I'm typing name as Sanjay Gupta Tech School and pressing enter. So my project will be created with this name. So one thing that I want to correct before typing this project name, we just need to select any one option from here. So I'm just selecting standard project template that is default. And now you can type name of the project. And here you can see press enter to confirm or escape to cancel. So I'm just pressing enter. So it is asking for the location. So I'm selecting desktop and uh, clicking on create project. So here you can see a uh, project is created with named as Sanjay Gupta Tech School. And here lots of folders are automatically available where uh, you can uh, do some things, right? So this was our step number four, right? How to create a project, okay? Now, next step is to connect your project with Salesforce org. So this project that we created Right now, we need to connect it with our Salesforce org. So again, we need to open the command palette. So for that, uh, you can just use control shift plus P or command plus shift plus P. Then this time you need to type SFDX, then authorize an org. Then uh, you need to select the environment. Then you need to provide the org alias name. Then browser will be opened and you need to provide a username and password. And then if prompted, you need to uh, click on allow. So now let's do this together. So I'm pressing command shift P and uh, SFDX colon authorize an org. So this option is available here. I'm just clicking. So here you can see, as I showed you in the slide, so it will ask uh, you to select the environment. So, okay, it is disappeared. So I'm just selecting it again. So here you can see default is this login.salesforce.com. Then it is having production, sandbox, and custom. So as per the environment, so if you are uh, using production environment, so you will be using login.salesforce.com. If you are using sandbox, so you will be using test.salesforce.com. So if you are working on a real project, so then you can understand production and sandbox difference. But if you are new, so I can explain like, Whenever any client purchase licenses from Salesforce, so they get production licenses. But when they deal with a consultancy form, so consultancy form basically creates sandbox copies of those production environment. So they will be creating dev sandbox, they will be creating QA sandbox so that they can do some hands-on, they can implement things and uh, after testing and ver verifying, they can just deploy them from sandbox to production back, right? So it depends on the requirement. Like uh, if you're using sandbox, you will select test.salesforce.com. 
If you are using production, then you will be selecting login.salesforce.com. Right now in this complete video series, I will be using developer edition org. And maybe uh, if you are doing practice, so that is free org, developer edition org. So that free org is basically having production licenses. Those uh, developer edition orgs have two users, free licenses, and that is uh, for production. So you, you just need to choose this production that is login.salesforce.com. Now, if you click any of the option, then it will be asking uh, to provide Elias name for your org, which will be uh, with which you will be connecting. So I'm labeling it as SG org, right? As I click enter, so it will automatically redirect to the browser and uh, browser will be using the URL like login.salesforce.com because I selected production. If I would have selected sandbox, so it will automatically redirect to test.salesforce.com, right? So I'm just clicking enter. And uh, here you can see it is op opening automatically login.salesforce.com. So here you just need to type username and password of your org and that org will be connected with your uh, Visual Studio Code project that we created earlier. So here I am filling username and password and clicking on login. So here you can see it is asking for verification code. So you can just uh, go to the email that is associated with the user and uh, through that email, you can just get your verification code. So I just pasted the verification code and I'm clicking on verify. So first time when you will be connecting your org with the project, so it will ask for allow access. So Salesforce CLI is asking to access the identity URL service, manage user data via web browsers, manage user data via APIs, perform requests at any time. So if you agree, you can click on allow. Otherwise you can click on deny as well. So I'm just clicking on allow. So I am logged in into my org. So now I'm jumping to Visual Studio Code. And uh, if you see the Visual Studio Code earlier, like this cloud was not available. Now it is available. So if this icon is available, cloud icon is available in your Visual Studio Code after creation of the project, it means your org is connected with this project. And at the bottom, you can see your org alias name is available here, right? And anytime, if you want to your if you want to open your org, so you can just click on this icon, so your org will be opened automatically, right? So this step number five is completed. I hope uh, if you follow the complete steps, so you will also be able to uh, connect your org uh, with Visual Studio Code project. Now after this, we need to go to step number six. So it says how to retrieve components. So if in your org, some components are already implemented, if you want to fetch them in your uh, Visual Studio Code project, so how we can do that? So you just need to open the package.xml from manifest folder. So in your VS Code, we have this manifest folder and here we have package.xml. And this package.xml is having uh, this code pre-implemented. So what it is saying, if you want to retrieve Apex classes, Apex component, Apex pages, and other things, and asterisk means all, all the Apex classes, all the Apex components. And if you want to enter any other code or if you want to remove any of the sections, so you can do that as well, right? Then uh, like you can uh, modify package.xml to add or remove components. Then finally, right click on the package.xml and you need to select SFDX, retrieve this source from org. So I'm just right clicking and here I have retrieve source in manifest from org. So if I click, so some operations performed and 
like these components which are listed here, they are available here. So if I go to force app, right? So force hyphen app package. So here you will see those things. So in my org, like this, this aura component is available. If I go to classes, so these classes are available, right? So initially when you create your project, so these will be blank, but when you retrieve your components through this package.xml in your project, so these things will reflect and here LWC components. So right now we don't have any LWC components. So those are not reflected here. Now, we have step number seven, which is the last step. So finally, now we can create a lightning web component. So I will be creating a dummy lightning web component, which will be blank. And I will let you know how you can deploy that lightning web component to the org so that you can use that. So here, what you need to do, you just need to right click on this LWC. So I'm just repeating the steps like we have these folders. So this force hyphen app slash main slash default, if you expand this accordion, this folder. So here you will find this LWC folder. And if you expand this, so you will see all the lightning web component available under this. And if you want to create any lightning web component, so what you need to do, just right click on this LWC and you will see this option, create lightning web component. So here you need to uh, provide the name of your lightning web component. So I'm labeling it as demo LWC. So it is asking where you want to store this. So this is the default option for siphon app slash main slash default slash LWC. So I'm choosing this option. So here you can see under LWC folder, demo LWC folder is created, which is our first lightning web component. And you can see demo lwc.html is created, demo lwc.javascript is created, and demo lwc.js hyphen meta.xml is created. Right? And uh, this I already explained in my previous video. Like you will be having HTML where you need to write all the markup related code inside the template tags. Then we have JavaScript, which is by default importing this LWC module. So here you can see module name is LWC and lightning element is the functionality that we are importing. And uh, this functionality is already extended. And here class name, you can see it is demo LWC, which is also uh, this demo LWC name is taken from your component name. And if you click here and press enter, so inside these curly braces, you can write the code related to your JavaScript. And uh, here, this is meta.xml, which is a configuration file. So by default, it is having false. If you want to place your component anywhere in the org, so you just need to make it true. And after that, you need to specify the targets where your lightning web component will be available. So here now I'm uh, typing the code, like you need to use targets and inside this targets, you can specify where you want to place your component. So here I am using target and I want to place this component on the lightning homepage. So here you can see suggestions are available. So I'm just selecting lightning homepage. So this way, first you need to change is exposed from false to true. And then inside targets, you need to define the target where you can use your lightning web component. And then you just need to save this file because uh, there is some changes in the file. In this JavaScript also, we did some change like I just moved this closing curly brace to the bottom. So I'm just saving this file. And in HTML, there is no change, right? So I'm not saving it. Now, if you want to deploy this component so that it will be available in your org. So what you need to do you just need to right click on this complete component. So if you right click on this complete component, so complete component, including HTML, JavaScript, and this configuration file, everything will be deployed to the org. So you just need to click here, deploy source to org. So it will 
So this message running SMTX, so here you can see deploy source to org successfully ran. And here you will see this message, successful message. And whenever there will be some error, so it will show those errors as well. And problems you will see here. So in output, you will see the success and failure result. And if your code is having any problem, so you will see that here, right? So this way, whole component is deployed to the org. Now, if you want to deploy a particular file, like if you change something in the HTML file only, so what you can do, just right click and deploy source to all uh, this file will be deployed only. So this way you can deploy your lightning web component to the org. Now, how you can verify whether your component is deployed or not. So we can just try to place that component on the home page. If it is available to place, then it means it is deployed successfully. So I'm in the org and here you can see we are on the home page. Now I'm going to edit this page. And uh, at left, you can see we have standard components. If I scroll to bottom, so here custom component is available and that is our first lightning web component. So it is available to place on home page, right? If I drag and drop it, so it will be available here. But it is not having anything in the HTML, so nothing will be displayed, right? So I am just deleting it. So I just gave you the proof like it is available here on the home base to place. Now, if I go back and uh, if I edit any record page, let's say I open account record. And if I edit this record page, so let's see whether that lightning web component will be available or not. So here you can see that component is not available. So this custom flow component is available, but that lightning web component is not available because in the components configuration file, we just mentioned like it will be available for lightning home only. So if you want to place your component on more than one places, so you just need to add more targets. So this way you can have the target, like if you want to place it on the record page, so you can modify it this way. And what you need to do, just save it, then either redeploy this configuration file only or redeploy the complete component. So just click on deploy source to all. So it will be deployed. Then come here and uh, you can just refresh. So we are still on record page. So if I refresh, now you will be able to see that component. So demo LWC component is available to place on lightning record page as well. So this way, I hope you understood how we can set up Visual Studio code for lightning web component. So if you follow all the steps, so you will be all set with the Visual Studio code and uh, you will be having a project created. That project is linked with your Salesforce org and you know how to retrieve components from org to VS code and you know how to deploy components from VS code to the org, right? And later in another videos, you will see these things again and again. So you will be able to understand the things in detail. So in upcoming videos, I will be explaining things in detail so that you understand the concepts very well. Thank you.